All right, so we just got our first look at SOLIDWORKS 2020, and man, there's some really great stuff there. I can't wait to get my hands on it. So today, SOLIDWORKS had three live streams showcasing some of the functionality that's coming in this latest release. In case you missed it, here's some of the key points and our biggest takeaways. Absolutely. So Todd, let's just jump right in with that very first thing that they showed. Detailing mode and drawings. Yeah, so they, they, they definitely focused on performance improvements. Everybody wants better performance, faster everything, right? So detailing mode, I think that's awesome because that's core functionality. At the end of the day, people make drawings of their, of their designs. And so it's going to really help the, the, the broadest uh, scope of people. And basically, huge performance improvements. If you have a drawing, the one they showed was going to take like four minutes to open. And with uh, detailing mode, it gets down to seconds. Yeah, that, that's incredible, right? So really streamlining that process and improving the workflow. Yeah. Now, one of the funny <laughs> things about this is that the workflow for SOLIDWORKS users has been changed. You no longer need to hit file open on a large drawing right. and then go get some coffee. Right. Right? You're going to have to rethink those coffee breaks because <laughs> using this detailing mode takes it from minutes to <laughs> seconds of opening yeah. up a large drawing. Now, if I remember this correctly, you don't even need to have the part file on the computer to use detailing mode, right? Exactly. And that, that's, again, that's one of those, um, those big, big, if we just go ahead and call it game changers things, right? Like you don't have to pack and go and have the model with you. Exactly. Or you lose the reference. You send it accidentally without the, the model. Um, so, yeah. And, and also, we're not talking about like just a viewer yeah, of the not drawing, a viewer, right? Yeah. It's, it's full drawing functionality. Not yeah. full, right? But a lot of it's it, a right? It's like the most views, of what you need. You can change the, the balloons, add the dimensions. notes, the add <laughs> notes, add dimensions. Yeah. It's a game changer. Yeah, yeah let's just call it that. Um, <laughs> so, one of the other things is more or less an improvement to an existing tool. The envelope publisher, they're calling it. Now, right. This is a tool that we talk about a lot in our training classes, right? But to us today, we actually saw this functionality become extremely useful. Yeah. Let's talk about that. Yeah, so again, a lot of users that we talk to, whether it's on support or in classes and things like that, if you've got larger assemblies and you're working on a sub-assembly trying to attach components to top-level uh, pieces in your assembly, right? You have to have your large assembly open to do that. Take a look at Envelope Publisher. Uh, it's really a way to streamline and not have to open up that full assembly it pushes the, the components down, the, the reference locations down to your, um, yeah. to your sub-assembly level. And again, it doesn't mess up your, your data management yeah. and your BOMs. These are some really great functions that you'll notice can improve your performance. But it's not always a button you can press. Yeah. And it's not always a new feature here that you'll notice the performance improvements. So what I've seen is that it just looks a whole lot more responsive and more snappy yeah. by leveraging some of the graphics hardware you already have. Right? Yeah, so, so last year, Graphics Boost um, and that pipeline was introduced uh, in 2019, and it was in beta technically that um, for that release. But now it's it's out of beta, and if you have a NVIDIA graphics card of uh, fairly recent um, age, it's going to improve your just your snappiness. Yeah, uh, it's going to be one of those things that you're just going to notice the second you get in there and start yeah. using it. I can't wait to get my hands on it. So, 3D scanning and mesh data. That was the next thing that we saw. Right. Some improvements there where now you can really use the mesh geometry in your models and edit it and do things with it, right? Well, scanners are um, just more and more affordable. Uh, more people are having those, getting those 3D scanners, and there's a number of use cases for that, right? And like you mentioned, there's more data uh, manipulation and things you can do within SOLIDWORKS, so um, with, within the core CAD stuff that you're already using, whether it's simplifying the mesh, um, doing different selection um, yeah. uh, options, creating reference geometry off of the mesh, that way you can you know, leverage that for uh, reverse engineering, right. maybe some other design uh, components up to that. And then um, a really cool feature as far as comparing that mesh to your, um, your CAD data, your CAD model. Yeah, a lot of great functionality yeah. there. Uh, simulation, yep. one of the, the most important tools in my book for a designer, always making sure what you make is going to work before you go spending money manufacturing it, you can virtually test it. And what we saw was one huge improvement to the simulation tool set where you have mixed mesh quality. So mouthful, but <laughs> it, it means performance improvements for your simulations. Yeah, so basically you can have draft quality mesh and high quality mesh within the same model. Yeah. That's, that's if, if you're familiar with the simulation tools and how you mesh the data. 
Uh, what that's going to let you do is get your, um, your loads and displacements transferred from sort of the areas that you're not as concerned about, but you need them in your model. Mm -hmm. You don't have to defeature them now and, and, and make them so that the, they don't kill your, yeah. your analysis time. And then you focus and you get your results on the area that you care right. about. Yeah, what that really means is SOLIDWORKS simulation becomes a lot more powerful because we can also now, as a result, model, um, simulate larger models. Yeah. So really great, powerful functionality there. Can't wait to try that. So moving on here to one of my favorite comments, actually by former TriMac engineer, Mark Peterson. Yeah. Um, he said, the foundation of a good model is a good sketch. It all starts in the sketch. So that couldn't be more true. And let's talk about what we saw there in sketching. It is G3 continuity. That's sure. a big one there. Yeah, it's one of those things that when you need that 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 um, continuity, that curvature, continuous uh, surfaces, it's important to you, and it's it's exciting to see them, them continue to develop that and add that into um, into the functionality of SolidWorks. Yeah. So then, um, you know, back focusing more on the more core mm -hmm. functionality here, we saw touch modes. Right. We saw some great improvements to yep. touch mode. They started adding some touch functionality there, some dedicated touch functionality there right. in the last couple of years. And this year, I think we're seeing a lot of improvements there to making it useful. Right. We saw swipe gestures for adding fillets or chamfers and inputting dimensions. I heard you could even throw away your keyboard, huh? <laughs> well, maybe I, not yet. Maybe I, not yet. I probably wouldn't yet, but I mean, t so touch, <laughs> the touch interface, um, it's probably, in my opinion, still a little bit of a niche workflow, but it's coming and, and more and more devices are, are coming out that way. And it's, it's, again, good to see that SOLIDWORKS is, is incorporating that kind of technology and that sort of um, thinking into like, okay, let's, how are we going to work with touch right. devices? And not just, you know, I, you know, a sort of a workaround, but it, it really gets yeah. intuitive and, and uh, new ways of doing the stuff with exactly. touch. So it, it looks pretty cool. The buttons are um, bigger, easier to press and things like that. You know, you know something also that almost got sort of um, uh, glossed over a little bit, but in the sketching, there's like more redo functionality. So if you, <laughs> that's one of those things like if you go undo, 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 and you're like, oh, I went too far, and you undo out of your sketch, now you can redo back into your sketch, which that that's always like, Again, it's the little things sometimes, right? I mean, yeah, it, it really is. It really is. Um, I, I, I got to say this. The touch mode stuff. I hate being that guy, but kids these days, um, <laughs> they, they potentially don't even know how to use a keyboard or uh, a mouse to, when it comes to using a computer. It's so intuitive to just use this touch modeling. I can't wait to use that. just hate being that guy, but <laughs> I'm glad it's here. Uh, maybe, it's now, maybe now's the time to go ask your boss for that new... Microsoft uh, Surface. Big Surface. That big of, Surface, yeah. yeah, there you go. Um, all right, flexible, rigid components. Um, this is one of those functionalities that has now become core functionality. In the past, we've had to share workarounds. I know we've, for years and years, been helping people work with springs, um, bellows, things like that, these yeah. flexible components, and, and, and now it's been integrated completely into the core modeling functionality. Yeah, so the, the workarounds that you're talking about, they would result in like configurations and you'd have to kind of manage all that. And having the, um, it's, it's almost magic looking um, uh, the way it works with flexible components, but it, it creates unique settings for each instance in your, in your uh, assembly. So it's again gonna work well with your data management, have your correct BOMs and all that kind of stuff. So you don't have to create all the configurations. So I mean, almost, almost, again, magic, almost magic is true. Um, all the great tools are almost magic, honestly, in my opinion. All the good tools are. Um, another one, almost magic, uh, structure system. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. A great new way to create large weldments. And it's different than the traditional weldments in that you don't have to make a 3D sketch. I actually don't know many people who like working with 3D <laughs> sketches. So you can use reference geometry, much more easier and intuitive types of geometry to help you build these large weldments. Now, this has been in there since last year, right, 2019, yeah. but it's just been a little bit more rounded out. The functionality becomes more complete, right? That's what we saw? Yeah, there were some enhancements as far as, um, you know, things that were not able to get into the first uh, launch of, of structure systems last year that now you can do. So uh, my opinion, the, the, the takeaway from that is if you do weldments, take a look at structure systems because the things like auto trimming and just the way it does patterns and things like that and, and works together, 
it's it's improved. Yeah, a and lot of, so it's, a lot of it's great to right see them. There. I mean, anybody that says they're you know doing less with SolidWorks as far as the enhancements, um, you're not taking a good look at some of this stuff because they're really just pouring more and and making making the stuff that was recently introduced even better. Yeah, they're they're really committed to improving the core modeling functionality. Yeah. They're committed to you as a user, valuing your time, making you as productive and efficiently modeling as possible. Yep. Um, really helping you get your job done a lot faster. Um, and then that last session there, right. we talked a little bit more about some of the other tools. We saw SolidWorks Cell. We saw SolidWorks uh, Augmented Reality and SolidWorks Extended Reality. Mm -hmm. A lot of ways that you can use your CAD model in other ways to help sell it, to help showcase it, to right. help see it and visualize it in a real world setting. That was some really cool stuff. Yeah, so they're, they, I mean, they, they use the, the buzzword, if you will, it's all works ecosystem. And, uh, but, it, but it's true where you've got all this other functionality, these other tools, these other products that are out there when you need them. The good thing about it is they're connected within SolidWorks. They work with your data. Um, so again, I would say, you know, take a look, let us know if you have some questions about that sort of thing. But as you need VR, XR, um, you know, AR. selling on the internet, <laughs> AR, um, you know, the, the, they're, they're working on that stuff. So they highlighted some of that and then they, um, but they really spent a lot of time on the 3D experience platform. I would say that was almost exclusively the 3D experience session three It was right a big there. part of it, yeah. Um, it is a huge part of the future of the design ecosystem and the world that, that we're transitioning into here. And I was happy to see a lot of the stuff that they were sharing. Yeah, and the, the, the message there that I heard and that, that really resonates is the, the, the R&D power of the SO systems um, coming in con and working in conjunction with SOLIDWORKS. Because I mean, SOLIDWORKS R&D, as great as it is, um, you know, they mentioned it's probably like a 20th the size of, of the SO system. So wow. you've got all these apps, these, yeah. this technology, that are um, that, that are being worked on and and starting to be delivered even now, right? And so for me though, it's um, uh, most exciting about the things that are like the project management, the collaboration and communication with other people as you work as a team with your core design stuff. Exactly. And again, that's going to be done in SolidWorks for um, for the majority of people and for the foreseeable future. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, all this other stuff that you can do yeah. on the platform. I mean, I, I like to call it Engineering 4.1, right? right. It's, it's, an, uh, it's a little twist on Engineering 4.0, yeah. which is the way a lot of components are now, the IoT type things, smart manufacturing, machine learning, all that stuff. But now enabling an ecosystem, an ecosystem that enables designers to communicate and collaborate seamlessly, efficiently, just better, allows for a lot more just improved designs. I mean, sure. it's, it's a great... Uh, great thing that's coming, and it's 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 here. A lot more functionality is, is in the future that was teased. Um, can't wait to see it. Absolutely. Um, now, thinking back on all that was shown, now it's just a little sample of what's oh, coming right. in 2020. Yeah. Todd, what was your one favorite thing? I mean, my favorite. I have to say, my favorite would be the detailing mode okay. for drawings because I just think that that impacts most people day to day um, dramatically. I think so. Yeah. Mm -hmm. for what about sure. you? Uh, for me, I really liked seeing the mesh modeling and the things that you can do with that. Um, working with STL files mm. and or 3MF files, things like that. Like really uh, addressing the fact that 3D scanning and 3D printing has gone mainstream. Yeah. And now you can look to SOLIDWORKS CAD to work with that stuff. Really, that's, that's a game changer in my mind. That's good stuff. Well, so, before, yeah. yeah, before we leave, though, let's talk about what, what we're doing with, um, mm -hmm. in, in October with yeah. more information that, uh, with 2020. So what we saw was just a preview of it. Not all the features that are there. We're, we're working hard here to uncover all the great tools, mm -hmm. the latest um, enhancements here to this new release, and we're going to share with you all the content that we've found over the course of 40 webinars. Wow. Two <laughs> webinars a day, every day through the month of October. Right. Some of them are tips and tricks. Some of them focus a little bit more on the what's newly old, maybe some previous releases, Throwback Thursday. Throwback Thursday, Throwback right. Thursday. Take a look at that. And then also some industry-specific ones. Yep. And really showcasing the, 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 the deep bench that we have here at Trimec. Um, some might be for medical device, uh, manufacturing, mm -hmm. uh, aerospace, defense. Really something for everyone out there. Yeah. 40 webinars throughout the month of October. Stay tuned for that. Absolutely.